because it's the narrowest part of the course. It is, and the, you have the crowd in the stands packed solid, making a terrific roar as you come to it. The horses are slightly distracted because it's a narrow fence. They have to come into it, and it does put a lot of horses off. It's a big fence to come. And, of course, the thing about this is loose horses at this stage, sure to be a few around. There's always a few, and they don't know quite which way to go. They come to the fence, they change their mind, perhaps go and jump it or stop on this side without even taking it, you know. Do you remember 75 when Martin Blackshaw was leading on Glanford Brig? Five, I think, loose horses, I think, they were in front of him. He was very relieved, Blackie, that they went and jumped it well and gave him a good lead. Of course, they swerved one way and then the next and eventually decided to go over. There was a good old horse, I think it was Barona, I think, who had been round in the National, and he was actually in front, and I think he thought, this is the chair, I'll go and jump it. And he finally made the decision for the other loose horses, and they followed him. Of course, this is the big ditch, Bill. I never landed in here, but you did. Yes, I did, in 1979, on the Champ, when a lot of loose horses came to it, went one way, changed their mind, came back and tried to sort of jump the fence at an angle from here. The champ tried to jump the ditch, the fence, the loose horses, and we ended up getting stuck on the top. An impossibility, I'd say. It was. I ended up going over further the back and bolting down the side of the wing as quick as I could to get out of the way. Didn't you ever think of having another crack? No, there was a New Zealand amateur here, though, called Dennis Gray, and he caught his horse about here, and I'd caught the champ by then, and he said, uh, do you fancy having another go, Bill? So I told him we'd better sort of Qantas off back to New Zealand. <laughs> Well, Bill, you have jumped it well a lot of times. I've seen you right up the inside there. And I remember Delmos really jumped it well. Delmos was absolutely brilliant. A fantastic feel to jump a fence like this on a horse like him. But having taken off and got over that fence, there's another trick because the ground is raised. It's a totally different fence from the other side. And it, it does make them catch, catch them out a bit on landing. But, of course, a few fences on, it's back to Beecher's Brook, and that's a very different story. The drop there, and horses nod when they land. From the approach at Beecher's Brook, Bill, it's a totally different story, because the fence looks like any other fence. You wouldn't know that it was Beecher's from the takeoff side. It has all the innocence of a nice, approachable fence, and it's the other side that the real problems come. Except, from here, the fence is angled across the course and it gives the illusion that horses are jumping into the fence behind us. We're right at the bottom end of the course, at the, at the bottom of the straight, and we're now going to start the bottom turn. And the, the turn is very, very sharp, and you just don't realise it. No. Now, you and I always used to go where the brave men go, down the inside, where the drops are bigger. And I remember you leading on Del Moss, of course, here, and you jumped it really well. He again was, he was a brilliant horse around here. Just used to pull off a little bit, about three or four off the inner. It helps the drop, isn't quite so great, and it helps the angle. You're just not having quite such a sharp turn on landing. Well, Bill, in 1969, very long time ago, when you were still doing your O-levels, I rode a horse called Steel Bridge here, and there were four of us tightly packed on the inside together. And, and you can't make your own mind up then, because something half a length in front of you might pick up, and away you go. And Tommy Carberry paid the penalty, down he went. It's coming now to Beaches Brook for the second time, and it's Highland Wedding, Seasbridge on the inside, the Fosser, Kilburn, Rondetto right up with them too. I didn't know they had colour in those days. Get off. <laughs> Would this be about where you landed? Yes, right up the inner bill, but there was one person, even on my inner, as I said, Tommy Carberry on Kilburn, but he paid the price, he fell. But here, where the drop is so big, you've really got to sit back. Didn't you get back? I could get back. <laughs> long you ride, the long you live. And then there was uh, Eddie Harty on the winner, Highland Wedding, and then Andrew Parker Bowles on the Fosser, having his first ride. Great chance for an amateur. That's the great thing about the Nationalists. Everyone gets a chance. It's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Well, what about your first view of Beaches Brook? Well, the first time I came here, I walked out and saw the chair. I thought, there's anything worse than that, I don't want to see it. So I went back in the weighing room. So, in fact, I didn't know where Beaches was, and it certainly made me cough when I came down from here first time. We've seen the chair. We've seen this fence, Beaches Brook. Let's go and have a look at the canal turn. This fence, Bill, of course, a rider can really make a lot of ground. This is a fence where, as you have to run along with the pack and do things as they come, you've got to make a conscious effort at this and literally, physically and mentally change the horse's mind. He's naturally going to come to it and go straight on. But you want to go that way. You've got such a sharp angle, 90 degree turn, you've got to make the effort and got to make the horse come out and cut in to jump the fence on the angle. And the closer you can get to that point there, it's of ideal. course, the better. When they land, they're in a bit of a heap and you have to really haul them right round. There's no race course in the world with a turn like this. And you've got to get that angle right, otherwise you lose so much ground. 
Of course, a lot of people have taken this well. I think you can win or lose a national. And in 1980, Charlie Fenwick on Ben Nevis was good. Made a peach of a job, just perfect. Cut out a little bit, came across the corner, saved ground. If you save ground and if a horse loses ground, it could be a difference of 10, 12 lengths. Yeah. And then you weren't so bad yourself, were you? No, um, I've had one or two nice moments around here, just, just catching it right nicely. I remember the last time we rode together was 1974. You rode Spanish Steps in the yellow and, and maroon halves. Maroon halves. And I was just had a lovely line. I just came off the, the bend a bit, cut the corner, jumped it marvellously well. Of course, you're lucky if you're in front here. Uh, I was on Crisp and, and was able to take what line I wanted, and he was brilliant. It's easier if you're in front because you can pull out and if you're stuck on the inside, a lot of horses around you, of course, you ha can't get out and you haven't got the angle to, to cut across. But not everyone's as lucky as we were. No, I remember one or two. King Gaddy, actually, Steve Smith Eccles. He went straight on. Was it pilot error, do you think? Or? Well, he should never have been out there in the first place. I think, actually, he had one or two loose horses causing a bit of havoc at the time. But if he'd been any good, he'd have avoided them, surely, Bill? Of course he would. And then he could have headed for home with the rest. That's it. If you, well, looking at it, you can obviously see I'm getting run away with. I couldn't do a damn thing about it. The unfortunate thing was, I mean, I could actually foresee it happening. And I got a loose horse either side, I'm getting run away with, can't do anything about it. So the horses, they don't know they got to turn left handed. So they've gone straight on. And the funniest thing was, was seeing the people's faces that are lying in the rail as I'm going straight towards them. As I say, there's two loose horses, me in the middle, and they're scattering all over the place. Did you ever look like going into the canal? Well, I, I was getting a little bit concerned at one stage, yes. But fortunately, the horse on my inside decided to turn, mine sort of turned with him, and the loose horse on my outside very nearly hit the rail. I mean, it could have been bloody nasty, actually. Bill, do we accept his explanation? Well, I suppose the stewards would, wouldn't they? So I suppose we'll have to accept it now. So he's nearly we'll, as good we'll as we We'll give him were. best, yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I'm, not, I'm not as old as you two, though. <laughs> you look it. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> well, Charlie Mann, the last time we saw you on television, you were carried off on a stretcher to hospital. Uh, two months later, here you are back for your first ride over the fields and entry fences. Is that very wise? Not really, no, but um, I was supposed to have my first ride at Newbury last Friday, but they called it off. I got nothing else organised um, until now. So I didn't have a lot of choice in the end, um, but I feel very well, and the horse jumps good, so um, there shouldn't be any problems. Well, you had a nasty fall at Chepstow on a horse called Iowa. Uh, I, I think did, we yeah. can see it just coming up now. Going quite well at the time. It was going very well at the time, yeah, I was quite surprised. It's the first time he'd run over fences, and he just hit the fence, went down, and got pushed over by another horse. And an amateur came along and galloped all over me. Well, you got a nasty old kick there. Yeah. Since then, I bought a back protector. What was the damage? I broke um, three bones in my base of my spine and crushed a vertebrae. Well, shouldn't you take up something more safe, uh, like perhaps hang gliding? Hang gliding or parachuting, yeah. yeah. Well, of course, you had a bit of fun here last year in the Grand National. You were going very well on W again. Yeah. Up there for a circuit, and then this happened. Yeah, he was going well at the time. There you are in front. He's in front, and um, a horse called Acarine just came out oh. of the left-hand side and knocked us for dead. As Richard Dunwoody said afterwards, he wouldn't have won if I'd set him my teeth. But Charlie, two horses appeared to gallop straight over the top of you. They did, yeah. I had a few bruises the next day. Um, I got a bit of a kicking on my arm, um, but apart from that, a sort of bottle of champagne put it right fairly quickly. So here you are again. You're going to ride him in 20 minutes' time over these fences. How yeah. do you see his chance? His chance will give me a great ride, if nothing else, and um, he rises to the occasion here, actually. And um, he's a super old horse to ride. I mean, you could go around him yourself. Well, I doubt that, but if, <laughs> if you survive this one, you've got Lucky Roo on Saturday. Lucky Roo on Saturday, yeah, I'm a national. I'm um, looking forward to that and having a good time in between. Well, we wish you a safe round, Charlie. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.